Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on you irons. Good evening. Welcome to this rather impromptu stream that we've uh, constructed. Uh, as you can see from the description, it's, it's about the academy teams. And I've, I've drafted in the expert on this particular topic, my younger brother, Mr. Ben Gates. How are you, sir? Very good, mate. Very good. Um, good to hear. Obviously, yeah, um, all, yeah, all, all the, the main teams, the under-18s, the 21s and the first team, um, of all one this weekend, mate. So, yeah, in terms of West Ham support, uh, it's a good weekend all round, really, in that respect. Definitely, definitely so. Um, as it says there, guys, please don't forget to like, comment, and share the stream to your social media platforms. It really does help the channel out tremendously. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, and make sure you hit that bell icon and you'll be alerted as soon as there's any new content added. As always, we thank you very much indeed for your support so academy talk live then you you done a few little recordings didn't you a little while ago about yeah. the matters in the the youth grade team and, and they seem yeah. to have been received fairly favorably so i yeah. thought let's do a live one absolutely mate and yeah i'll have to hold my hands up um i've been probably a little bit quiet let's start starting a new start the new job a couple of months ago so i've had me head into that and obviously with christmas but yeah, yeah happy to to get it, you know, reinvigorate it and get it going again. And there's been um, quite a lot happen in both the under 18s and 21 since I last done my my last one update. So, yeah, I've still yeah. got a few things to, to chew the fat on. Absolutely. So I'll tell you what, we're, we're, where we're going to start, if I, if I may direct you in this particular direction and, and you guys in yeah. the live chat i'll get to the to the chat in a moment guys so so just just chat amongst yourselves and I'll, if you want to put any comments about the under 21s 18s loan players whatever um please feel free to do so we're not really gonna tr so much touch on the matters of the uh, the fa cup that took place today great result though it was but we're going to deal with that in the match review which will take place tomorrow so this will be exclusive yeah. for academy team chat so if that's not your thing guys this is probably the wrong thing for you to be watching but if you're interested please please stay in and, and, and get get involved in the chat and as i say we'll get involved when we can and and i will say if you're not interested you should be interested because there's some real great things going on in the uh in the youth Absolutely. setup so yeah there's not Definitely. you know don't watch dancing on ice or whatever it is stay tuned in definitely 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 right okay so Ben, yesterday we went to Merseyside 
to yep. take on the blue half of that fair um, part of the world, uh, Everton. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we went up there with um, basically the tea. I'll tell you what, I, I've, I've, I've gone to a lot of effort to put this together for you, you people at home, because if, yeah, if you... Yeah, he's a good player. What was the team that took took to the to the pitch? Well, I've got a little video here that will that will give you the the rundown on on what basically took place against Everton yesterday. You know, that was, you know that was what I was going to say one. straight away, Rob. That was the wrong one. <laughs> we're going to we're going to talk about the change of running order, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the under twenty ones instead, and we'll come back to the under eighteens. It's fine. It doesn't really yeah. matter. No, so, it doesn't matter, mate. Yeah. So but, the the under eighteens took on uh, Crystal Palace. Yeah. Um. That was today, as it happens. Yes, mate. And um. You know, just just for people that don't know, obviously. So last season. Uh, we had a great run with the under 18s, just sort of recapping a little bit. So mm. we had a real great run. We finished second and we went on a, an amazing run, sort of just the last two thirds of the season. I think we, we didn't lose a game, a bit like this season. We were winning, winning, winning. But Southampton actually won the league mm. um, because they just they didn't lose and we just couldn't catch them up. Palace actually finished third. Uh, in the under 18s last season, and they had a bloody good team last season, and they'd run us close a little bit. So, uh, you know, going into today's game against Palace, um, I was, you know, thinking we're going to be in for a tough game because they always seem to have a good youth set up themselves. Um, but as, as um, I don't know if you've just touched on it, Rob, we've we done them 4 0. So it seemed like it was a pretty comprehensive win. As you just put up there, the um, you know we we raced into we was you know we was we was two nil up within fifteen minutes and we was three nil up within half an hour. So essentially, the game was probably done and dusted within the first half an hour. Yeah, I mean we we got to the interval three nil up. So I mean you, you know you you're going to have to throw it away in my opinion most of the time to be three nil yeah. up at half time and. And end up sort of not getting all three points. Uh, I, I mean, just you know, for for the guys that don't know, and we'll probably come on to this a little bit more. I mean, we haven't we've won every game in the league in the under 18s. I think that's played 11, won 11, and um, you know, four nil is not unusual. We are wiping teams away. Do you, do you know what yeah. I mean? And. Uh, We'll do a little recap, but obviously today uh, Oliver Skulls put us one nil up. Obviously, he's playing left wing back, and people yeah. might be familiar with him. He's played for the first team in that um, last game in the Europa Conference, and yeah. in my opinion, I feel, I thought he was the best player on the pitch, regardless of you know him being a youngster. He was, it, it, you know, without putting pressure on the lad, it, he yeah. looked like a he, he looked like a miniature Gareth Bale. Like every every yeah. time he got the ball, the way he just could he could just put the ball in so consistently. You know what I mean? It was just it like first time whip it in. Um, so I haven't seen the goals from today, but obviously he put us one nil up. Uh, George Earthy, who's a central midfielder, he put us two nil up. That you know he he we do seem to have, and I'll probably I'll recap on it. 
We've got quite a few players in midfield that can get a goal at under-18 level. We seem to share the goals around quite a lot. Um, so, George Earthy, who I think has been capped by England at youth youth uh, grade football before. So, he's obviously highly thought of. Callum, he puts Tuna up. Callum Marshall, then, um, who you know, people might have heard of. He's, he's recently signed his first pro deal, young yeah, Irish but- lad who... Yeah. He, he he started the season absolutely on fire. I think he scored maybe, I think he got eight goals in his first three games, or might might even be more than that. I think he got two hat tricks and then another two goals. Yeah. And as a result, he was kind of promoted to the under twenty ones, which I think he, you know naturally he found it a little bit more difficult to be getting the goals because he's he's quite a small lad. He has, he's, you know, he's, he hasn't filled out yet, so he's obviously come back down to under 18 level, and he he notched the goal. And then a lad called Gideon Kodua, yep. um, got the fourth. And actually, you know, I really like the look of this Kodua. And and the reason I like the reason I like this lad is he hasn't followed, a, you know, the same trajectory as a lot of the other lads in the team. A lot of those other lads have been with West Ham since they were like six, seven years yeah. old. You know what I mean? They've really just come through the ranks. But this Kodua, I think he was playing just normal kind of Sunday league type football up until a year or two ago. So I think he's quite raw. And as a result, I think that could he could have that bit of hunger about him to really try and forge a successful career at West Ham, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it was, yeah, 4-0, four, four as you say. I mean, we're absolutely flying away with the under-18s league. I mean, oh. Kevin Keane's doing an absolutely astonishing job uh, yeah. at that level. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, 11 out of 11, as you say, in the league, you can't really sort of no, you, you uh, can't, like, wax lyrical enough about it, in my view. No, and I've got to be honest, Rob, if, if you don't mind, I'll... I'll uh... Because obviously I've done a little session uh, probably a couple of months ago now, so it might be worth just recapping a little bit on where on the, the the games that we've played since sort of my last review. Because you know, sorry, please do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so so just just quickly rattling off. So I've just I've just got the last few you know since the end of November. Yeah. So this is pretty much end of November. The 26th of November, we done Arsenal 4-1. You know, so, you know, we've beaten them. And then the, the next two games, this is what really showed me or indicates to me that these young lads are, they've, they've got a real chance, mate. They've got a real great character. That's what I feel like this team have got. Because we then, we've just done Arsenal away. Mm-hmm. We've then gone to Chelsea, went 2-0 down. And done them four two, right? We then played Spurs, and I think we was losing three one in that game, and we ended up winning four three. Do you know what I mean? So we, yeah. in those three games, we played. Three, let's be real, the three biggest clubs in London. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah, at, at youth level, at yeah. fucking senior level, and we've yeah. we've wiped the floor with all of them, right? We've then <clears throat> something that we haven't done, even though we've had decent youth teams, we haven't really put on um, a Amstel. decent youth... We haven't really put on a decent youth cup run for a long time. Um, mm. And the next the next game that we had was just before Christmas against Sheffield United away, um, and we beat them 3-1. And that is, I think, even though the under-18 Premier League, yeah, it would be great to win that, and, and we looks like we're in a good position to win that, I think... If we can have a, if we could do well and win the FA Youth Cup, that's probably an even bigger marker, yeah, or success. You know, because people remember that. People don't yeah. seem to remember you won the league at under eighteen level. Do you know what I mean? But I think yeah. if you can win the cup, um, then that really goes. You know, give gives some of them lads a platform to to really try and forge a successful career in the senior game. Absolutely. Um, size isn't everything, Larry. That's what I keep telling the wife. So, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, as, as, I mean, you touched on it on one of your previous broadcasts that there's been a lot of obviously movement as far as the 21s were concerned, which has had a bit of a knock on impact on the 18s because they've been pulling a lot of players that would would have been playing for the 18s. They've been pulling them up sort of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> which you'd have thought that that would have had a negative impact on the 18s, but it doesn't seem to have at all. No, not at all, Matt. And I, I was just looking at... Um... I'll tell you, I'm going to start that because we're going to talk about the lone players down the track. So, Charlie, I will keep that one in reserve. Yeah, I mean, looking at... Um, and we'll come on to the under-21 game, but when when you when you put the team up for the under-18 Rob, there was a couple of lads missing that I thought, oh, I wonder where they are. And actually, they played for the under-21s <clears> last night. Yeah. So... Kalen Casey is our main centre half. He's only 18. He plays. Regan Clayton, I think he's left back or left side yep. defender. He can still play under 18 level. He played for the under 21 last night. But that's what I like about youth football because that will just give someone else a chance, whether it's someone coming up from the under 16s or someone that's been sitting on the bench. And, um, you know, I. I think you know we've got we've clearly got a very good team at under 18 level uh, hence you know we've you know looks like we're about 12 points clear and won every game um but again it's just about those lads developing physically attitude wise have they got it to push on into the under 21s and then into the first team even more but i think um We've obviously got a very talented team, good management set up at that level. Um, yeah, so no, it's really under 18. It couldn't be going any better than it is, really. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, like you say, we're, we're blowing teams away. Even, even games where we're going behind. Like you yeah. say, you mentioned the 4-3 the game. And it's like, because I, I think, we, were we 3-0 down? In that. I, I, think, I, that I think right? we were 3-1 down in that one. 3-1. Yeah, I mean, to win win that 4-3 from 3-1 down shows yeah. a great deal of character. Because I think a lot of teams at, at under 18s, their heads would probably drop at that point and go, mm. but to, to pull it round, I mean, that's great strength of character yeah. in my view. Yeah, I think, I think what they've got at that level is they, they know that even if they're 2-0 down, they are going to create chances. Do you know what I mean? So I think their heads don't go down because they know they've got some talented strikers and all they need is a couple of chances and they could be back in the game. And and actually, I think that game, um, Divine Mabama actually knocked, knocked a couple of goals. And I think yep. what what's apparent to, to me is that obviously he played in that European game for the first team, didn't he? He did. And, and actually, since he's gone back into the youth team, I think that game in the first team gave him a lot of confidence. And he's brought that back into the youth teams. And as a result, pretty much every game he's playing, he's, he's scoring a goal. So I think, you know, fair play to him. He's another one that he could be playing for the under-18s. He's mainly playing for the under-21s. And, and actually, at under-18 level, he looks... He looks too big and too powerful to be playing against those lads anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he got he got a stint on the bench. Unfortunately, he didn't get used today. As I say, I'm not. We're not going to go, go cover the the Brentford game too much. Yeah. But both both Sw um, Swire and Mubama were on the bench yeah. today, which yeah, yeah. I think is testament to to the sort of the the progress that they've made. Uh, all right, David Moyes didn't bring them on. You could you could have that discussion. Why didn't he? But yeah. he, he's he's involved them in the first team. Yeah. I I did wonder yesterday when I saw the the squad that was announced for the twenty ones. It was the twenty ones that played yesterday, yeah. wasn't it? Right, getting that right. Yeah. yeah. When I saw the squad yesterday for the twenty ones, it had neither Harrison Ashby, um, Pierre Equa, and Oliver Skulls involved. I did sort of wonder: is is there going to be any? Any sort of like none, none of them were sadly. Yeah. None of them yeah. were. I mean, I, I did kind of think that probably he's not going to play Ashby because the talk is that he's not going to sign his new yeah his new contract. Blah, blah, I mean, blah. that's that's really unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah. I think you know Ashby. 
if, if I'm honest, you know, I've been probably a bit critical of Moyes recently, but but actually Moyes was giving Ashby a shot last season, and he, he played a few games, but then he got injured, and I think, mm. and it was just it was a shame because Kufau had got injured as well, and I think Johnson they were they was all injured at the same time, and you kind yeah. of think. If if Ashby was fit, he would have been in, and then all of a sudden, his whole West Ham career might be totally different. But it seems he's he's going, and you know, good luck to him if he goes. It's a shame, but you know, yeah. it is what it is. I'm I'm very much of the opinion, and I don't know what you think about it, Ben, and and you guys in the live chat, if you want to sort of jump into this one as well. I mean, I know he's not getting played because he's not signing a contract, but maybe yeah. he might sign a contract if he gets played. <laughs> if he thought exactly. That- if he thought that actually I've got a manager here that that does believe in me, I've got a manager here that will nurture me and bring me through into the first team, and I can learn my craft, and I I could be I could be the the right fullback here for the next ten years, easy, not a yeah. problem. Oh, yeah. Right. Unfortunately, Moyes is a very stubborn man, and he's just made his decision, and he's, yeah. he's got to Newcastle, and that's very regrettable. Now I know yeah. that some people will come back and go, well. Perkins hasn't done too much since he's gone to Leeds. Um, who was the other one? Uh, and Gakia hasn't done too much since he went to Watford. Yeah. Um, Grady Diangana hasn't done too much until since, since he went out to um, West Brom. And all of that is true. But I, I just think that, like I say, I'm a big one for we've got that academy of football emblazoned on the side of the pitch at, at London yeah. Stadium. And I just think that we need to at least look like we're trying to live up to that particular yeah. tag. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit of a farce. And uh, and not only that, Rob, it, it doesn't look good for the other young lads coming through, does it? Do you know what I mean? Because it's like exactly. they, they, they're looking and thinking, well, Ashby's good, but he's not getting it, you know. The more people leave, it's, it's like rats leaving a sinking ship, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you start looking and thinking, what's going on here? Why are they leaving? And then your head might get turned. So we've yeah. got we've got to stop that rot. But, um, it? Yeah, it, we've got to stop that rot. But, you know, he he's going, it would seem. But, you know, just going back to the under-18s, Rob, just to you know, finish off on those guys, I think where I, I can, you know... The, defensively, they look they look really strong. They, you know, it, we've conceded, but obviously in games. But um, like I say, Casey is probably the standout centre half that looks like he might do something. He he looks he looks very you know he's only a young lad. He's eighteen. He's very tall. He looks very yeah. gangly. I think if he can if he can get a bit of muscle on him over the next year or two. And then you know get get a loan out at say League One or Championship to toughen him up. He's got a go, he's got go a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so Casey's looking good. But I, I think where we really excel at under eighteen level is in midfield and up front. Do you know what I mean? I think we've got obviously we've got Skulls on the left. He's obviously very highly thought of. On the right, I think it kind of chops and changes. I think there was a lad Reese Batram in there today, but yeah. you know, but it's it's the three in the middle of the park that really, you know, we've got George Earthy who scored today, we've got Lewis Orford and Patrick Kelly, and generally, it it seems to me we dominate the midfield at under 18 level with those three because I think. Kelly's like a box to box, you know, bit of an all action. And then Earthy and Skulls, I think if you went through it pretty much every game this season, one of them is either scored or assisted nearly every game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They seem real technical, gifted footballers. And if they can grow physically, I think both of them have got a good chance of, you know, whether it's at West Ham at Premier League level, it's always a tough ask, but they've got. They've got a good chance of making a good career in the men's game, uh, and then move, moving on to up front. Well, we we have got a lot of firepower with Marshall, um, Kodua, and Mabama. They they can they can really score a lot of goals, um, and you know if Marshall and Co- uh, Marshall and Mabama go up to the under twenty ones, you've got some younger lads coming in. I think it's um, Liam Jones. Yep. 
he's Steve Jones's son, isn't he? And I think he there was a game or two where he did come in, where Marshall had stepped up and he scored. And th- th- there's another lad's favour for when me, he's nicked a couple. Yeah. So it's like there's a good conveyor belt there, which is really refreshing and great to see, really. Well, you're getting a, a few a few people that are firing questions at you. They can obviously see that you're a very very knowledgeable about your your youth grade <laughs> football, which is yeah. why I've got you on. Um, yeah, Hammer eighty nine, reg, regular supporter of the channel, has come in and he's asking you a direct question. Do you think if Moyes went, uh, Ashby would get put in the side? And I I, th- I think he's talking about the first eleven. Do you think that Moyes is a, is a block for some of these players more generally than Ashby? Uh, do, do you know what? It, it is difficult to say because, um, let, let's be honest, Kufal's form has been very poor. You know, I'm, I'm, there's a lot, you know, in terms of the first team, they're probably half the team, maybe more, half the team haven't really warranted staying in the team. But, you know, Kufal hasn't been the best. Ben Johnson, I, I've got to be honest, this season... I don't think he's done an awful lot wrong when I've seen him, but it just, he don't really seem to be getting a run out. But yeah, I, 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 it's a difficult one. I I, I think the, the answer is yes. I, I think if Moyes, like you say, Rob, I think Moyes is quite stubborn. He's quite old mm-hmm. school. And in a way, even though I want to see young players in the team, I do understand Moyes is saying, well, if you ain't going to sign a contract... You ain't going to play. Do, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I do get that. But then your sort of flip side to that about, well, maybe if he got a run, he might. But Moyes has got to think about the team first and foremost, doesn't he? And it, his priority is not mm-hmm. Harrison Ashby, who, quite frankly, is a young kid starting out. And he's not going to dictate to Moyes who, who plays, you know? So, yeah, fair there um and hammer 89 also has asked the question uh how is callum marshall doing uh, he's heard he's meant to be class yeah yeah no just i think i mentioned it just you know 10 minutes yeah. ago or so but i think he he's got the goal scoring ability at um under 18 level and he's he's moved up to under 21s think i'm not sure he actually scored you know in maybe three four five games so I think I think he needs to grow physically a little bit, you know, because yep. I, I, unfortunately, you know, if you're a slight, small, young lad, the further up you go, the more difficult it's going to be. And you've got to have, you know, if you're small and slight, you've got to have something else that is exceptional to really push you up there, like blistering pace. Do you know what I mean? Or, you know... And, and I'm not saying you can't make it if you're a little lad. Like, look at Phil Foden, but he's like the exception to the Joe rule. Cole. He's a, yeah, Joe Cole, Mo, Michael Owen. But they, you know, Michael Owen had that blistering pace. Joe Cole yeah. and Phil Foden are freaks. Do you get what I'm saying? They're, they're like yeah. one in a million style players. So Marshall looks good. Um, but I think he, he, you know, he, he probably needs this season and next season at under-21 level to see how good he's going to be. Fair, fair but, enough. But, you know, but it's interesting, Rob. We, I think since we bought Marshall, we, I think we, we kind of, we've kind of identified that Ireland and Northern Ireland as a bit of a... We, we, we think it's a bit of a hotbed of talent. Because, um, you know, we, we brought uh, Marshall in first. Then we brought Patrick yep. Kelly, who's central midfield... Then we brought in a young lad called Josh Briggs who was on the bench. So, yeah, you know, we, we obviously think that yeah, there's some good talent. Yeah. I think there is. Oh, I think there's a lad in the under 21s, um, is, yeah. like a young centre half, I think. Um, so we've got we've got a good four four or five young lads in the under 21s and 18s, young paddies that um, we obviously think are pretty handy. Obviously, me yeah. pose a, a paddy, good. Good solid Irish name, Meepo Odebeko, and uh, <laughs> who, yeah, he, he's doing. I don't think he's doing that great, to be honest. But again, I think he yeah, scored. Think, today. Did he score today? I think did, I did a, a, there was there was something I saw an article that said said he he'd got a goal. So oh nice, and I, I think look, I, I think 
Meepo <clears throat> looks like his level's probably League One. Yeah. And he might nick a goal every five games at League One level. And good luck to him, you know. But it just goes to show, mate, you know, you can score 25, 30 goals in the under-18 league for Man United and then come to us and do it under-21s and then go out on loan playing against centre-halves that have got 10 years' worth of experience. And you just... You might end up at Gravesend and Northfleet or Ebbsfleet, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's not a, you know, that's not a slight on them at all, but, you know... It, they, as they say, they've got aspirations of uh, playing a little bit higher up than that. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anything else you want to sort of say about the under eight, under eighteens before we? Or, no, yeah, mate. I, 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 other than obviously, really proud of them. I, I would like to go. I've not actually seen them in the flesh. I would like to try and get up to Rush Green at, at least once this season to hopefully see them. Bring the trophy, you know, the Premier League under 18 trophy to West Ham or in the FA Cup. Wouldn't that be great if we could yeah. go far in that? And uh, maybe, you know, because I, I think if we got quite far in that, we might play some, some of the games at the London Stadium, in which case I think a lot of fans would go and watch. Well, I remember the, the Youth Cup final. I, I went to the two, one in 96 and one in 99. Yes! The one in '96, we obviously got beat over two legs by Liverpool, who contained Michael Owen, who you you've just referenced. We had obviously Frank Lampard Jr. and Rio Ferdinand in our ranks. Yeah. And then three years later, we played in the uh, the the final again. This time, and the final was a two legger. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, the FA Youth Cup final is home and away, right. and. We, from memory, I think we lost against Liverpool 2-0. And then I think we went up to Anfield and lost 2-1. We lost lost 4-1 on aggregate. As I say, this was a team that contained Michael Owen. I've got a vague recollection. It might have even had Jamie Carragher in, potentially. Oh. Um, and David Thompson's another one, I think, that, that oh, yeah. played. That you just named, he, he did play for Liverpool latterly. But, but yeah. then, like I say, three later that we then played Coventry over two legs and we we beat them on a nine nil aggregate I think it was three nil at Highfield Road and then I'm trying to remember if if it was the the, the Highfield Road leg was first or second I can't remember but anyway the, the the second the game at Upton Park always remember that because they opened up I think that from memory they opened three sides of the ground up yeah and the side that they didn't open up was the east stand the chicken run essentially yeah but they realised very quickly that, bloody hell, this is, you know, there's people coming in and they, they, they're wanting to sort of see it. So they literally, I was sitting in the Bobby Moore lower watching this game unfold. And as the game's going on, there are people walking in front of the stand on sort of like behind the pitch, but in front of the stands. Or that oh, yeah. walk way and they were walking and sort of making their way into the sort of like the chicken run. They just went, oh, go on, go and sit over there sort yeah. of thing, you know, and it was, it was brilliant. We we obviously won nine nil on aggregate and uh, smashed them. And we they, that was a good team. I mean, you had obviously the standouts were obviously Joe Cole and Michael Carrick, but there there were some other people that went on to have a a very very good career. Obviously, maybe not at, at Premier League level, but a, a, yeah. a rung or two down the pecking order. You know, professional footballer. So you know, yeah, it's good. good uh, chip, and like but, I say, Rob, I, I think a lot of at that age. Conf like any and anything in life, confidence is such a big thing. And if mm. we can go far in that FA Youth Cup this season, I think the confidence and these lads have obviously got the talent at that age group, considering their league position. If they can get that confidence, maybe an FA Cup win brings, <clears> then <throat> you know I'd like to think in the next season or two that we can have a few of them breaking into the first team. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Safe driving, Charlie. Charlie's just coming back from Brentford. He's he's this guy, this boy clucks up some mileage, let me tell you. He, he was up at Leeds earlier in the week. It's like bloody hell. Honestly. Um, I but I believe he was, Kent. I'm fairly sure Carragher was in that that Liverpool team as well as Michael Owen. Um and Hammers eighty nine says uh that he's so we were there together then, Hammer eighty nine. There you go. There you go. Oh, very nice. Right, so so that's the under 18s that have been covered off then. So uh, yes, so now we're going we're to turn our attention to the 21s who played 
yesterday. The Palace game was today. The, the, the Everton game was yesterday. Yeah. So, That's right. So, so it, this is... Again, right. Sorry? Go on, mate. Sorry. I was just going to say, so just for, for the benefit of, of the people that are watching at home that may not be aware of the team that took to the, to the pitch, I've got, again, a little sort yeah. of montage of, of who was who took to the pitch. A two-one victory to to uh, Mark Robson's Claret and Blue Army. Uh, <laughs> again, I mean, just to give the, the people at home. I mean, obviously, this this was a victory for our under twenty ones, which was a, a very creditable result, especially away from home. But yeah. it has to be recognised that this comes against the backdrop. It's not been a particularly great season, has it? By and large, for well, the twenty ones. Well, well, it hasn't, Rob. However, what I will say is that um, when I done my last sort of podcast or recording, um, we were stranded at the bottom of the league, and I don't think well we hadn't won a game, and I'm not sure we even had a point at that at that time. You know, we we might have I think got two or three draws. Yeah, I think we might have got two or three draws, and we, you know, we weren't getting hammered. But we were just we couldn't win, you know. So, just doing a quick recap on, you know, if if I may. So, Absolutely. in in October, um, you know, so we Chelsea done us one nil. Uh, then we're then in this Premier League International Cup. PSV wiped the floor with us five nil um, in October. We then had a Premier League two game. We drew two all with Blackburn. I think then we started to things started to get a little bit better. Um, we then took, uh, we then got done by Brighton 3-2, Liverpool done us 3-0, and we was, you know, it, it looked like we're going down. Um, but it just seems that coming into November, we beat Wolves 3-1. That was our first win of the season. We then beat Spurs 1-0. We then played Feyenoord in that International Cup. We'd done them 3-0. I think that was a Mubama hat-trick. Um, and then, you know, actually, from mid-November up until yesterday, we hadn't played. So there was quite a big break for the under-21s. We've yep. then started off 2023 with a win against Everton. So that that's really propelled us up the league. Um, and there's, there's only 14 teams in the Premier League to Division One, right? Mm. And with you know, so there's 14 teams. The bottom two get relegated, and we're now up to 11. So we, you know, we've 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 brought ourselves out of that relegation, albeit that a couple of the teams in and around there, you know, have a few games in hand on us. Mm. But at least we've got those points on the board, and hopefully we can kick on and uh, push push up the league because you know the first half of the season. It was looking desperate for, for the under twenty ones. Yeah, I mean it's it's been a recovery. I mean, as you say, we were results wise, I mean, maybe not in terms of performance, but certainly in terms of results, it wasn't quite what you would look for. But there does seem to have been a little bit of a resurgence lately. I mean, do you, do you is there anything in particular you put that down to? Is it has it been, you know, players coming back from injury or I, I don't know. What 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 have you noticed any sort of difference? No. 
I, I, I don't think it. There's nothing noticeable, Rob. It's not like no. I don't think there was any in, injuries to key players. I, I think it was a little bit of a rub of the green, and okay. uh, and 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 I'm, I remember reading a few articles. Um, I think is, is it Mark Robson who's the the manager? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, he was saying, look, we're not playing bad, and 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 a lot of the games we'd draw or we'd you know we'd be winning and then concede an equaliser in the last minute or you know something like that it, it was just you know lacks of concentration and it's they seem to have perked up a little bit and and like I say I think um as we touched on previously Rob a lot of the key players in that team had gone out on loan so we we, we were starting with a new newish team um but it, it seems we've turned a bit of a corner, albeit there's still a long way to go. Um, but what what's interesting, Rob, that I, I yeah. thought is that um, the new Brazilian centre half that we bought, L- Luizão, L- yep. Luizão, or whatever his bloody name is, yeah, um, he he was on the bench and he came on. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, I don't know much about the lad, if I'm honest, but hopefully, do you know how difficult it was to find his uh, his likeness in a West Ham shirt on sure. for that little montage I put together. It was an absolute nightmare. Everybody else, I could find it on the club website, no problem. Him, uh, that might be interesting. Yeah. What about, I get something knocked up, so. But, but, but like I say, Rob, I, I think actually, what, one thing that might be a little coincidence um, is the upturning fortune is actually Kalen Casey going up from the under 18s to the 21s. He looks quite a commanding centre half. So he mm. played yesterday. Um, yeah. Obviously, you went through the team. I must admit, Rob, that individually, the lads that are in the under 21s don't really excite me as much as the lads in the under 23s. Uh, sorry, as in the under 18s. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there's a few lads in the under 21s. It's like, well, put it this way, I don't think they're under 21. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's some lads there. Like I think that Keenan Napier Forson. It seems yeah. like he's been he's been there for about three or four years, and it's yeah. like, yeah, I really, I really. There's put it this way, in my mind, there's quite a few of them. They've got no chance of breaking into the first team, and probably not, it, no. it, you know. And and if I'm honest, you know they're they're probably going to be like non-league. They like I say they'll probably be at Dartford in a couple of years' time, and that's no disrespect to them or Dartford, but um, you know I just think you know there's not too many to get excited about. Obviously Casey's in there now, uh, Clayton's in there. He looks good. Freddie Potts, who you know we know Rob. Well, we don't know him. What I'm saying is when we was in Leon. We had a little chat with your man. Um, we we had a little chat with your man, uh, Mark Phillips, who's a uh, bit bit of a uh, someone in our family's friends with him. And uh, I I asked him in the car. Yeah, I asked him in the car in Leon, who's who's going to be the next breakout? Who's got the best chance? And his view was Freddie Potts. So yes, I remember that. So. Um, I like the look of Freddie Potts. Obviously, Mabama's in there, and Squire was on the bench. So you know these guys. I put it this way: we'll, we'll probably come on to a few of the lone lads, but I would say, I, I would say the likes of Mabama. Um, it, there's a chance he might go out on loan in January, potentially. Do, do you know what I mean? If if there's a lower that- lead, sorry. Do you think that's the right move? I I would say so. Yeah, I think I'll put it put it this way. I think um, he's starting you know, under twenty one level. He is scoring goals, and yeah. and I and he's physically he he looks like he can compete with men. You know what I mean? Height. He's obviously got a bit of pace about him. I think he's got a little. He's got a bit of bulk. He doesn't look weak. So I think um, I think the next step for him is to be looking at a loan. Um, obviously, it doesn't look like you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag with the lads that are out on loan at the moment in terms of their success, whether they're playing, whether they're excelling, and and um, 
But I, I would say if there's a if there's a lower league team that are struggling for goals, then the West Ham you know management side should be touting Mabam around as a as a potential loan deal. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the only thing I always get a little bit annoyed about is that they they don't seem to have the recall recall clause in contract. So that if we get a sort of like an injury or someone mm. sort of you know, goes lame or whatever, that we can't pull them back. I mean, a, a case in point, a case in point, and I know we're going to cover loan players down the track, but just sort of, it sort of does to kind of tie in with that. I mean, yeah. obviously at left fullback, we've, we've had a little bit of an issue and there's a young lad that we've got applying his trade for Birmingham City at left back. And he's he's having a really good, making a really good fist of it. And I sort of sat there and thought, well, if we had a recall clause in his deal, then surely, you know, Cresswell's not exactly setting the world on light of, of late, this side of the, yeah. of the break. Emerson, yeah. no, thank you, but no. And I just look and I go, that, that could have been an opportunity for that kid. If we had some sort of recall clause written into the deal to sort of say we can activate it at seven days notice or whatever you know loads of clubs have done that down the years but you know we just don't seem to include it in in those loan deals for whatever reason a lot of the time yeah no i i agree with what you're saying we we, we should be having a clause like that <clears throat> I, I do actually think um uh, what, what's the lad's name again you're talking about rob i can't remember his oh, name Manny sorry Miguel. Manny Longuera, sorry, I had a, had a bit of a brain freeze there. So, obviously, Longuero, obviously, a bit like Scarls, we, we, we've got we've got a little bit of talent on that left side. Do you know what I mean? It's probably in terms of the youth setup. So, Longuero played in Europe for the first team, and a bit like Scarls, I thought he was the best player on the pitch. He was Agreed. real. He was really attacking. He had a good engine. I, I actually think for him and for West Ham. I think it's best that he stays at Birmingham for the season. Do you know what I mean? And I, I, I think even though Cresswell um, hasn't been setting the world alight, uh, you have got Emerson there. Who, in um, this is in Moyes' mind. In mm. Moyes' mind, Emerson is ahead of Manny Longello at the moment. I would think, mm. and obviously Ben Johnson's quite a versatile lad. I just think, you know, Longello. Rips it up at Birmingham, which by all accounts he is. You know what I mean? I know he's he's actually scored a cup. He scored a goal. He's got a few assists. You know, like any young lad, he's put because I think like all these young fullbacks now, most of them seem, seem to be better attacking than defending because fullback seems to be a position where you know the likes of Trent. You, your fullbacks get more assists than your wingers nowadays. You know, they're big playing wingers essentially, aren't they? Yeah. So I think Longello stays there for the season, works on his defending, and then comes back in pre-season, you know, really challenging for the number one spot, if he can, you know what I mean? I think, I think his contract might be up at the end of the season. I don't know. I might have to check that. But I've got a funny feeling. And unless, and this is another thing that I think that, you know, Chelsea are brilliant at doing this. When they send... Chelsea, they send players out on loan that they think have got half a chance of making it in the first team, or at mm. the very least that they they see a value in as far as you know we can sell this player on. Before yeah. they loan them out, they make they get them to sign a, a year's extension on their deal. It's mm. brilliant. I don't understand yeah. why more clubs don't do it, including us. Mm. Well, well, look, I think um, yeah. So I think just just to finish off on the under twenty ones, Rob, um, it's good news that their, their results have picked up. There's there's probably one or two of their play, you know, one or two that might look for a loan um, at the lower leagues. Mabama being probably top of that that tree, um, mm -hmm. and then hopefully they can just keep on performing well uh, and steer clear of relegation. So I think that's probably the uh, you know the the aim for this season. Do you know how it works with the 21s in the league format? Is it just a straightforward league or is it one of these things where the top however many team have a playoff at the end of the season? Is there anything like that going on? Do you know? Not not as far as I'm aware, mate. I it's think, just a um, straight league. 
I think it's a straight league. They have like a Premier, they have a Premier League Cup as well that we actually won a few years back. And Declan Rice, Rice was the captain. Yeah, yeah. He, he was he was the captain that lifted it up. So you know, it's all it's all good stuff. But like I say, hopefully the likes of Mabama and Potts can um, push on. Fair, fair. Before we um, we we talk about the the loan players, um, well, actually it. it Actually, it kind of feeds into two questions that I've starred, as a matter of fact. Charlie, who's making his way across from Brentford, he asked earlier, do we suspect that Chester's, Oco, Flex and Nevers have been recalled from loan to save the 21s from relegation? And also, a uh, similar sort of question, do you think that out from Rob Singleton, do you think we have brought our loaners back to strengthen our 21s or loaned them out again? Well, look, I think, I think the primary reason that we've recalled them is they weren't getting a proper run out in, the, in those teams. And if yeah. they were, there's no way, you know, at the end of the day, the under-21s and the under-18s are development football. They're, they're meant yeah. to develop players for the first team. Now, the, the, the midpoint of that is sending them out on loan. How are they going to perform and they obviously haven't performed. Do, do you know what I mean? So I think there's no point. There's no point those young lads sitting on the bench for those teams for the rest of the season. So I think the likelihood is they'll they'll come back. And you know Armstrong, Ockerflex, there might be someone in League One that will say, "Well, he, he won't." It, this is a very similar scenario to Connor Coventry a season or two back. He couldn't yep. get in the Peterborough team. He couldn't get in a paper team. He come back at, at, at championship level. He come back at Christmas. We then loaned him out. I think to was it MK Dons at League One level, That's right. and, yep. and actually he he done well. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the likelihood of where those lads might go. I think I think Chester was actually on loan in League Two at Colchester. Mm. You know, yep. so so short of him going out on loan at uh, you know National League. He probably will find himself in the under twenty ones for the rest of the season. Um, Oka Flex has probably got more chance of getting a decent loan, maybe to like a top top end of League One. Um, but these lads have got to realise that when they walk into a Swansea or a Colchester or whoever, the manager's not going to go, "Oh, we've got a lad on loan from West Ham. He's going to be our star player." They've got to knuckle down and. That's when they realise how good they are, and they're, and and they're looking at they're looking at these lads, thinking, hold on, I've come through, I've come through the academy at West Ham. I should I should be running rings around you, and they're not. Do you know what I mean? No. So, do you think that that's no... where the um, because obviously back in the day, and people of a certain age will remember this, that there was the 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 football combination reserve team football, and that that obviously got scrapped years ago. Do you think that that's detrimental to the development of these players, that they're not getting regular game time playing alongside and against seasoned veteran oppositions that will take them to places that they've never been before? It's difficult to say, Robert. I, I think probably yes and no. I, I, I just think, I, I, you know, I think the loan pathway is a good pathway. And you look at the England team, Mm-hmm. You know, you look at the England team and the youth England teams over the last sort of five years, we've had a degree of success. So I think I think that development side is working in England. Um, just maybe, maybe not at West Ham as much as we'd like. You know, I think, unfortunately for me, I think stats-wise... Uh, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure at the beginning of the season, I think we've got one of the oldest teams, you know, so we aren't really Moyes, even though in Europe he's brought a few of the lads in, you know, like today, not that I want to go into the cup game, because I know you're going to, you know, we're playing in the FA Cup against Brett, Brentford's reserve team, because that was their second string that they've had. And to just not even have a couple of these under-18s on the bench for come for five minutes was a little bit disappointing for me. Fair, um, fair. But yeah, in, in my view, you know, those lads coming back, 
they might slip into the under 21s, but hopefully they can get another loan out. But I think one that I've just touched on, Rob, and I think this is quite sad. Um, it's quite sad. Harry's career is is panning out. Is Connor Coventry? You know, you know, he's not he's not getting any game time. He, I think, I think we knew at the start of this season we brought Downs in. Downs is ahead of Coventry, and Downs can't get. Him. Do you know what I mean? And that is with Suchek. That's with Suchek playing like a pub player for the whole of this season. And, and you know, so Coventry Coventry needs to go. Co- Coventry needs to get out of West Ham for the sake of his own career because he's just wasting his time. Yeah. Charlie makes the point that uh, Occoflex is, is basically stuck with us because he's already featured for two clubs. He's already played for us and he's played for Swansea. So he's, he's, he's basically he's going to be stuck in the 21s. Or is, is that presumably that's the nah, is that the same for all the loan players coming back then or not? I can't remember when did he play for the first team, Charlie? You're going to have to. I, I'm I'm not sort of done my research on that one. That's a that's a, a fair point. If it's if it's correct, obviously he's played for Swansea. I didn't realise he played for us this season. Did he play in the one of the Conference League qualifiers or something like that? I'm not. He might have done. I, I don't recall yeah. that, but. But I think, look, obviously those three have come back. Um, I need to get a little bit more up to date on the other lads on loan. Like you say, I, I think the, the best one is the one we've touched on, and that's Longello at, at Birmingham. Yeah. You know, he's, he's the one that is starting at championship level pretty much week in, week out. And um, the Birmingham fans love him, and he looks a real talent. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any uh, final points you want to make before we knock it on the head, old son? Um, no, mate. I think I think we've covered it. I think um, I'll I'll do a bit of a recap of the other lads on loan, make some notes over the sort of next couple of weeks, and hopefully, you know, we can keep churning out these good results in the under 18s especially, and um, cement our our title because it, it. Let's be honest, it's ours to throw away at the moment. I mean, I'm just looking at it now. We're fifth. We're 15 points clear, you know. So uh, the only way you throw that away is if they get complacent, which hopefully the management team won't let them. Fair, fair. Um, Charlie's just confirmed that. Yeah, he did. I, I, I had a vague recollection that he might have made an appearance in the Conference League. Um, I was sort of thinking, what did he come on from the bench? And yeah, so Charlie's confirmed that. So basically, as far as Oco Flex is concerned, that it looks like he's got to be stuck with the twenty ones. Yeah. But he, he's fine. I think they need they need a bit of help <laughs> as as we, we touched on as far as the league positions concerned for the twenty ones. But you know, every little helps, as the advert says. So yeah. anyway, all right, Rob. Well, look, Best. thanks for having me on, mate, and much appreciated. It's been been good. Absolutely, and and thanks for your for your time, and thank you you guys who've uh, got involved in the live chat. A little bit of back and forth. Um, we're going to be back with the uh, the match fr- match review tomorrow, Duke and I. Uh, so please make sure you hop along for that one. If you haven't already done so, please do make sure that you've liked the stream, subscribe to the channel, comment on the stream, all the rest of it. Subscribe, hit the bell. You know the drill. I don't need to tell you. It is, uh, I'm sure, burned into your brain by now. Um, I'm going to play the intro, the uh, the little promotion for Iron Supporting Food Bank. Please consider giving them your support as well. And we'll see you again soon. And uh, come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. Forge from Iron is proud to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham United fans and friends inspired by the work of other football fan food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations from Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply seven distribution centres in the borough, seven days a week, and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. They are supported in their efforts by West Ham United Football Club, the WHU Foundation, LS185, London Legacy Development Corporation, Newham Council, 
the Met Police, Spire London East Hospital, Expedient Security and a large number of West Ham and football fans. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thank you for your support. Come on you irons.